your hands together for this Grammy Award nominee, Tim Bowen Jr. Chicago, where you at? I'm down in Queens into the room tonight. I need about 3,000 trees to jump to your feet. Tell your neighbor we get ready to blow the roof off of this place. Somebody put your hands in the air, open up your mouth and scream. I believe if you scream loud enough, you won't get what you put into it. I just want to make sure I'm in the right room tonight. Chicago, where you at? Now look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Say oh neighbor. Come on, get real church with him. Say, I don't know if you realize it yet. Or if you sense it yet. But you are standing next to a conqueror. All that wasn't the right person. Look at somebody else who's been through something. Say you are standing next to a walking, talking, moving miracle. Because if I can lift my hands and praise them, after the last three years that was designed to take my life, Mark twist them to you tonight, Chicago. Is there anybody here that loves Jesus? How are you doing? I am fantastic. Good to see you. First of all, um, you probably had no choice but to be uh, doing music. You know, it, yeah, that's pretty much my story. <laughs> but my family is, um, they're savages. Well, a lot of the black generation from that era, they just didn't play. Right. So, like, I'm looking at, like, I got three babies. Right. And it's encouraged that whether they sound good or whether they sound bad, you just say, oh, they're so cute. When I grew up, no, uh, Becky, Marvin, CC, my dad, it was like, if it wasn't good, go back and I can't deal with anticipation people. Uh, I can't. Um, in, in my family, uh, my mom, all of us is the same. The, the Catholic church I grew up in, the black Catholic church, the whole choir was our family. You couldn't sing, you played instruments. No, straight up. It was, and we didn't, it was the same thing. It's a different generation though, but. No, 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 it's not a different generation. What is it? It's some weak adults who don't want to sit here and speak truth. I'm sorry. If you cannot sing, baby, you can't sing. Get a tambourine. Go, no, go play the trumpet, drums, guitar, saxophone, clarinet, flute, or you going to be the no keeper. Cause if you can't play instrument, look, you could carry some bags or something. No, I, I'm, I'm a hundred percent. I can't deal with that. But it built who this generation is now. Like, if if it wasn't for that kind of teaching that yes. grew up, I promise you, I wouldn't be sitting here right now. Yeah, if you bad, you bad. You bad. I like, I just, I, I don't. To me, that I'm telling you, that's that's everything. Look, I, I, I hire. Look, I got hire people. Man, I remember we had a show. When Colin Powell passed away. Okay. And I had a booker and she was like, oh my God, that was a great show. Uh, you should bring donuts in tomorrow. I was like, you know what a 15 people on the show, you only booked two of them. The other 13, I gave you the phone number. So it ain't like <laughs> you had a great show booking guests. I'm literally sitting in front of my uncle right now. And all I said, I feel like, I ain't bringing no donuts in tomorrow. <laughs> now, if we had 15 guests, and, and you booked 13 of them, I got them. Yo, great job. <laughs> but maybe, um, maybe she needed some encouragement. Buy your own cupcakes and donuts. I'm, I can't, no, I, 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 that, I, that really does bother me because I, 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 I fundamentally believe that when 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 folk don't give you the hardcore truth, I, come on. When you come up against come on a real situation, you have a false sense of uh, a, a false sense of belief. Yep. And it's like I don't see what's going on. Well, because you really can't sing. That's good. No, and it'll make you. I'm telling you, self awareness is so key in this business. And, and with the advent of social media, it's so many people I say that are a mile wide and an inch deep. Yeah. Kathy Hughes has a phrase, she call it, you ain't deeper than mustard on a hot dog. 
I love the thing your generation in these saying. Hey, what? But you know exactly what that. I know exactly. You know what that means. You what that means. You ain't deeper than mustard on a hot dog. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> but that, but uh, but uh, but that to me, when you look at like I when when um I never when uh, uh get on up came out. Okay. So that was that. Uh, so that was the uh, it was the great scene when um, Maceo was talking to Bobby. Okay. And he's like, Bobby, man, what you doing, man? Why? Man, go all out there and, and go out there and make some music. And the brother who played Bobby, he said, man, listen. He said, from the moment I met James, he was meant to be out front. He said, there's nothing I could do that could put me out front. He understood that's what it is. Now, I remember calling my executive producer because he wanted me to pull back. He was like, man, you being too hard on the staff. And I was like, I call, as soon as it came, I called when it came, when, uh, when I finished seeing the movie, I said, I said, I can't do what you want me to do. He was like, why? I said, Exhibit A. I said, because I said, we wouldn't be talking about how tight James Come Brown on. band was. Talk about it. And talking about the shows and how, and how for not Mr. Dynamite and all that. I said, if he didn't understand the standard, we were here. Prince was the same way. I, I said, show me somebody, not the black standard, the standard. The standard. I said, and that's what makes them great. I said, now, in the moment, you don't like it. I said, but somebody has to be real to g- truly pull the best out of you. And I just think too, too many people today don't want to be pushed that hard. Absolutely. I completely agree. So how do you, so how do you deal with, with, with your folks when you're, when, when you're rehearsing, when you're, when you're taking people through, when you're having to hire people because uh, you might be saying, man, my people were tough. But then all of a sudden you go, dang, I sound just like they do. It is weird how much I resemble my Uncle Marvin Winers, uh, Marvin Winers. And I grew up saying, shout out to you, Uncle. I grew up saying, he don't have to be this hard. He does not have to be this disparate. Because I watched him right, right. work all day at his craft. Right. Like, we see him now pastor. We see him now. But he worked. He will question you. Yeah, are you kidding me? He will. I'm sure. I mean, you, hold up. We spoke at Bethune Cookman. And again, I grew up Catholic. Man, we didn't read the Bible. <laughs> we didn't know how many books were in the Bible. We didn't. We couldn't. We couldn't tell you what was new and old. Look, we had a missalette. Okay, that, <laughs> we, the, what they, they, they missalette. Missalette. They. It was a booklet that had all the readings for the month, the scripture for the month, I'm and you. It, look, it's all it. It's all in the missalette. That it's all like budget. No, nah, it's all right. Churches that had the original no, budget. No, you got no, one no, book. Nope. <laughs> nope. It was a monthly missalette. And every Catholic church around the country had the same missalette. Okay. Catholic church don't play. Like, we're going to be all, like, you ain't freelancing out there. And so, so you, you, you go grow up. You you ain't, re- I'll be somewhere with classmates reciting scripture. I'm like, what y'all talking about? <laughs> like, I, I got to go to the back. What's the page number of that book? And then get, that's that how he showed up in my missalette. Yeah, that's how it was. So I spoke at Bethune Cookman and I said something. Uh, and I, I quoted the scripture. And so when I sat down, uh, oh, Mar- Marvin goes. What did he say? Yeah, I ain't lying. He goes, um, what um, what scripture was that? I was like, man, I don't know. That was like Judges twelve. I don't know. I was, and he was like, uh, there's no Judges twelve or whatever it was. And I was like, look, it's in there. Like, it like I know what I said. I know the scripture I recited. It's in there. Now I can't give you chapter and verse, but. I know it's it. I didn't guarantee. I didn't care. But that's him, though. <laughs> he he. And what I tell you, but you what you see is what you get. Right. When I tell you, I used to I used to look at him rehearse for eight and nine hours, and say, it don't take that. And I you like that. we couldn't be out of here in three. Listen, you can get the same thing done <laughs> if you had sent the music earlier. You would have come in here and get inspired, but it's the <laughs> same thing, and it produces and it right. builds something. So now my team is watching me. Nobody outworks me. Right. Nobody outgrinds me. I, I believe in myself and I believe what God put in me and I walk it out. So it's like I'm, I tell people all the time, I'm the oldest, youngest. Look at me. I got the rock right. pop leg cross. Hey, I'm the oldest, youngest guy. But it was that family that you talked about that, see, that brought that up. I think so. See, that's interesting. We we were coming back from dinner last night, you know, I, and I'm not going I ain't going to say no names, Henry. Come on. Call um, him. I ain't going to say no names. But he was like, how you know? When you you were the best, like I knew I was the best. Listen to me, 
oh, I feel like I'm sitting across from my uncle, y'all. But 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 here's the thing about that. Here's, how did you know you were the best? Oh, because it was it. You know you the best when you in the room and you like, man, these fools can't hold a candle to me. You know that. You know that. You you know you've been there. You like, man, I'm about to out sing all these fools. I'm cracking up. It's just annoying. No, but but you know, but you also know when you're not the best. You do. Which then means I know what I gotta do to get there. Yes, you do. But see, here's the thing that bothers me. Talk about it. If you are black and you are a non-athlete, people got a problem when you say that. I want you to, if you are if you are a black boy, okay, and you say you in the seventh grade, and you, he says, "I want to be the best that ever played football." That's great. Oh my God, LeBron said he wants to be the best that ever played basketball. But if a black boy says that seventh grade. I'm going to be the best journalist. I'm going to be the best lawyer. I'm going to be the best engineer. Look how cocky and arrogant he is. And so it's, I have never noticed that. You t- If you take but it, not in sense. sports, no, we literally hold up. Oh, and, and they'll, sh- they'll show all oh, the work he puts in. They, they will glorify that. But they, but if you have that conversation that has nothing to do with sports, I'm gonna be the greatest Supreme Court justice. No, how dare you? Wow, how dare you? Wow, and and we black folks will say the same thing because we're conditioned, 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 and that's the. So I think it's the hardest thing to try to talk to a young person to get them to say, no, 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 you you need you need to you need to understand as somebody. I inducted to the Hall of Fame, as Monty said, did you ever just envision growing up all of this would happen? Yes. They were like, excuse me? I'm like, now, was it your parents? Was it like how? Uh, because for me, it was definitely that family that you talked about. They made me know. They put a dog in me. It's like a, so when I'm singing, when I'm in with her, I just, it's just an awe oh, in me. Like, what, what, well, I'm, well, I'm, well, I, I, I I think it back. First of all, grandfather and grandmother maternally were married like 44 years. Wow. Only live eight blocks. So I spent a lot of time with them. Grandmother only came in business. Parents this year married 56 years. Oh, wow. Um, and it was, my parents never went to college. Congratulations. Never what They weren't, they weren't, never made more than $50,000 combined. But it was like, you're absolutely going to get education. And it really even, I mean, when I think back, it it wasn't even, no, you're going to be the absolute best. I, I think I think what it really was is the foundation was laid and then is now what are you going to do with it? And so then for me, when I, when I decided I'm going to this school, it was like literally walking on the campus, I said, I'm going to be the best ever come to this school. Now, now you got to do it. And I, so, so it's a mindset, it's attitude. Uh, it's a, it's, it's just growing up in the conversations with relatives and, and where they affirm, they also challenge hardcore. So like we had family debates. They never treat us like, okay, y'all go to the kitty table. It was like, oh, you want to get in this conversation? You can get in the conversation. Keep up. Uh, but you ain't gonna get treated like no kid. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. We will kick your behind and destroy your arguments and hurt your feelings. Yep. And then you got to go lick your wounds. We ain't even gonna hug you. Yep. So if you want to come in this debate, come on. But you know what's going to happen if you can't keep up. Sit in this. So it's like children's church. My my parents wouldn't let us go to children's church. Nah, you go, no, no. You go sit in the main service and understand what's happening in here. And if you go to children's church, it's going to be the play in that front. Man, my grandfather told the priest, man, I don't need to come to you to confess my confession. I can go to God straight. Come on. Dude, I saw my grandfather teaching the, teaching the, uh, uh, teaching the priest scripture. I was sitting and I was like, "This Negro is crazy." He was a bad man. He was a bad. Man. So, so when you, so when you see that, yeah, I think what that does is it, it gives you. Man, he told me something tripped me out. He told me, "My brother, y'all ain't got to tell people yes, sir, no, sir." He says, "Yes will suffice." He said, "I had to sit here and tell white folk, yes, sir, no, sir." This was exactly what he told. I was like, to my brother, like, I said, "Man, what, what does come from?" He's like, "Yes will suffice." So, so I, so I think growing up, he passed when I was fifteen. I said, I think 
growing up. But you're proving my point. Yeah, that's that, the village you came that's from. That's the building. So it wasn't necessarily you're going to be great at being a journalist. It's the building up of all the other stuff. And now you can go do whatever you want to do because you've been, you've been built to uh, this foundation and yeah. fit it in whatever field you choose to go. There you go. I love it. There you go. There you go. I love it. There you go. So, so for your, you said for your three kids. For my three kids. So how, so how, are there moments that when you sit here and go, yeah, I think I would, I think I would push a little too hard. No. Really? I, I, well, my wife is a little more lenient, but I'm not. I'm, I'm the guy who, like you said, if, yeah. you gonna, if you're going to stand here, there make eye contact. Like, I don't let right. my kids walk in here and be speaking to me and looking down and looking away. No, 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 stop. I do that with kids. And a couple people say, hey, be my son. I go, look me in the eye. Look me in the eye. I won't take a selfie with a young black boy who won't smile. That's I said, say, bro, this ain't no prison photos. You can smile at the photo. Because no, there's so many. Because we, we are teaching young black boys to be hard. Come on. Yo, man, you a man. A man will smile. I was like, it's a photo, dog. Smile. I looked, I, I've seen, literally said, no, ain't going to be no photo of you unless you smile. And the mama will look at me and I would go, no, I'm dead serious. I need an intern with you for like a No, no. I would be <laughs> laughing for a Oh, yeah, you want to be great. Wait, uh, sign me. Hey, put hey, 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 on hey, clip. hey. It, because I don't be behind that camera or behind you cracking. Oh, oh hello, but be better not miss that shot, though. <laughs> Get the shot, Antoine. Oh, it's all <laughs> Okay, who is that? Antoine. Me dancing on stage with Snoop Dogg at a sister at a music festival and somebody stopped recording. No. And had the money angle and the money shot. Antoine. Not Antoine. But Antoine kept his job, though. No, barely. <laughs> when he kept his job? Barely. He on probation. So what did that look like? You come off the stage, woo, man, Snoop, hey, here up. Yeah, it did, did, did. No, no. Okay, let me see what I said. No, thought we had it. See, next morning, I'm flying to New oh, York. Cracking me up. I'm flying to New York. Oh, send me the video. Has sent me the video. I look at the video on the plane. Why the video stop? It's too hard. What happened? Send text. Say it all. Send me the rest. Oh, I, mean, I thought Deshaun had it. Deshaun the driver. You too hard on Antoine. I don't like it. I don't like this line. I don't like this line. The missed the shot. The money shot. And did anybody else get the money shot? Snoop had to send me another angle. Okay, well, you got it then. Oh, because that one wasn't what? It wasn't even shot vertically. It wasn't shot horizontal. Missed the money shot. But you got This is no. the story. You will have it together. You will have this story for the rest of your. And he going to have it too. He gonna have it too. <laughs> That's the top. Hey, I'm tired of that for this man internship. You are hilarious. But that, but 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 dad, you know, but again though, to me, and then or then it was like, well, you know, I got 19 out of 20 right. Yeah, but you got that one wrong. I love it. Hey, I love it. I I just think that again, if you want to be great, yes, sir, somebody has to push you to greatness. I agree. Like, who's dropping a cap behind me right now in a live interview? <laughs> See, I don't understand. Because I know. See, nah, nah, do you do like Prince and James Bond turn around and go, absolutely. You hear them like, my, 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 my team already know what this means. You hear them? What? <laughs> they already know. And you I hear with my smile. You hear with that five? Yeah. You be like, oh, let me praise the Lord. No, I just find them $20. Yes, sir. <laughs> I'll never forget one time uh, my MD hit the wrong song next. We had the full band, and I turned and I smiled at him. And he was, and I just stayed there. And it was about five seconds too long that he that his smile went from to, like yeah, you know what you did. You know when I lean on this smile too long, you know what it means. There you go. So, but I think it builds something in you. And yes, it um, uh, my father told me one time, as long as the pain to remain, I want to get this right. As long as the pain to remain the same. Is less than the pain to change, you'll never change. Did I say it right? No, it's not about right. Somebody right, somebody right. right. But as 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 long as it is is yes. staying in this current I mean, if it's mediocrity, if it's if it's just less than, as long as that pain is less than the pain to change, you're never gonna change. Man, I worked with the Houston Defender and Sonny Messiah Giles, 
she cussed out the head of sales. And I was an intern. I was typing my story and I was like, I ain't turn around. I was like, and that summer, she cussed out the managing editor, the senior editor, the head of production. And I was like, let me tell you what my goal is this whole summer. I ain't getting cussed out. <laughs> you get through the summer and I can check out all my stuff. I was like, she ain't going to cuss me out. And folks were like, what? I said, no, no, no. I ain't getting cussed out. That to me is the equivalent of, no, no. I'm going to have my stuff together. Got to. I'm not going to be sloppy even one time, even give her a thought about it. She ain't cussed me out that whole summer. Not one cuss. But that, but that, that, that's one of those things that, again, it, 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 it builds you because you say, no, 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 no. I'm not going to give somebody an opportunity to jack me up. I'm going to make sure my stuff is tight. And I think you can apply that. Uh, to anything, yeah, universally. If if and 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 I think the problem with my generation and the generation coming behind me is everyone seems to be comfortable. We we want to be comfortable. We we want we want to be soothed. We want to be set. We want to feel comfort in everything that we do. And no one is and and no one is a general statement. But we need more right. people taking big shots to get out of this pool and go swim over here by yourself. And when I say not, people, somebody might say watching, oh, yeah, but people make mistakes. No, people make mistakes, but I can accept a mistake except when I told you to do something and then you do, did not fully do it. And now I can't accept the mistake because I told you in advance. That's the one that also gets me when, when, you, when, you, when you tell somebody, Oh, I see what's coming. Do this to avoid this from happening. But then you forget to do it. And it's like, yeah, but I did it 19 out of the other 20 times. Yeah, but. That wasn't the instruction. This one is what's screwing us up. Come on, you're teaching. Anthony. You t- <laughs> I don't get this. Is th- what did Anthony do? Man, he hit me the other day. <laughs> he the other day. Email all day. Hey, you got to back up to that uh to that interview. My drive crash. You mean an interview that was <laughs> December 2021? You mean when I told you to dump all interviews onto another drive three months ago? But I dumped everything except that one. But right now we need that one. That one. See? Anthony had a lot on this, but you gave Anthony a lot of things to do. And the thing is, Anthony is the one. The interview was, 18, was almost 20 like old months it. ago. I don't like it. Guess I what? I don't like this at all. Uh-huh. I don't like this. Anthony works for a living legend. Can you imagine his workload? And guess what? I bet he backing this interview up right now. In real time. Speak. He got redundancy <laughs> going. If this go out, something going to get right back. <laughs> oh, man. I the love The thing it. is, when you need that thing at that moment, that's when you need it. That's when you need it. You're talking. And that's just, I, so I, I just think the chat, I just, I just fundamentally believe that 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 when you talk about this generation and, and people get caught up look i was hard on my, my fellow folk when i was so they like the, oh you gen x well, i was killing folks at the same time like, yeah. man, you what you doing but i i just think that that builds you to be great i'm sitting here listening to you tell me how you became who you are this is fascinating to me when you laying out how your folk were like um you ain't gonna be sitting there mentioning my name in interviews and your stuff sloppy. But see, that's the common thread. There's a bar. I mean, and then if you talk about the scripture, it's like when Christians make concession for living any kind of way, it's like we press towards the mark. What is the mark? The high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. So I got to know how G- the standards that Jesus set. Now, not religious you know, because people will try to put religion on you. Mm. I'm talking about spirituality. Right. That's the mark. Right. And I'm sitting here listening to you in the common thread that I'm hearing. I feel I promise you, I'm just meeting you for the first time and you feel like my uncle. But it's a it's a it's a it's a common thread that all of the greats tend to have. And it's an insatiable it's an insatiable appetite for greatness and to be above average. So it's like I, this is fascinating to me. OK, so you just mentioned greatness. Someone said once, people remember those who are great, not those who are mediocre. I disagree. We remember those who are mediocre. Absolutely. Think about all the people who were first round draft picks who were bust. 
I re- yes. They will forever be associated with being bus. That's mediocrity. There's one from Duke that's coming to mind right now. <laughs> yeah, I know exactly who I'm talking about. But but that's the, and, and I think people forget that, no, 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 if you're mediocre, they'll remember mediocre. Yeah. yeah. That is an amazing point. Absolutely. And I just think that a lot of people don't think about that. But then you ask your question, your, yourself the question, what do you want to be remembered for? And I think it then still goes back to what you talked about earlier, which is a a standard, a bar. You have to have some level that you refuse to let people bring you under. Yep. I'm talking about because what makes people is how people live their lives when no one is watching. Yep. That That's the thing that, sh- so I'm sitting here Watch, I mean, you clean, you got the, the cocaine white on with the, with the, with, I mean, you clean, not a hell out of place, got the jewelry. That didn't, that's not for this. This is a reflection of what you do when nobody is watching you. Yeah. And you think about that. You, you literally think about it. When people, I, 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 I kind of know what the, I think the answer is going to be. When somebody comes up to you and they say, Tim, I want, I want, I want, I want you to be my mentor. What do you say? Um, it's probably a churchy answer, but I, I, I don't like people. We get into mentorship and then you then start questioning if I'm your mentor when you don't like what I say. So you need to get a clear under. First of all, I would have to know that I'm your mentor. But if I'm like, OK, I could kind of see what did God say? OK, what 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 did God say? Because I'm actually in a situation like that now where I told somebody to go home. My assistant is in the corner cracking up because she was in that meeting. I said, go home because I gave them instructions. Right. They keep saying they need to recheck with God every instruction I give. I said, that's not how this works. Right. God tell you I'm your mentor or I'm not. If he told you that up front, sit down and do what I told you to do. Right. And trust that I'm not going to mismanage you. If I mismanage you, it ain't your bill. It's God's bill. So I tell most people no. They come to me. Won't you be my mentor? No. I don't know you. I ain't met you. But... I do use the biblical model. Moses picked Jonathan. Elijah, what did he say to Elisha? So what I explain to people is, mentees don't pick mentors. Mentors pick mentees. I need to see something in you that I'm willing to invest in. Somebody put this man in B flat. And I need a whole <laughs> get in here. I need to, somebody get, that's good. Shut I'm up. using it and I will not be giving you credit for it. It's all good. Okay. It's all good. Now, all I'm good. not bring. I may give you credit the first time. It's all good. It's audio tape, so we good. <laughs> we got the footage. We got the footage. No, Anthony recorded. <laughs> we may not. We may not have this footage. Really? But straight up, that's what I do. That's good. That's what I do because most people, and I'm like, I don't know you. I ain't never seen you work. That's I good. I don't know your work ethic. I got to see something in you to want to put something in you. And so I think when you talk about your uncles and aunts, whatever, it's probably other folk in your family who were singing but weren't really that, who didn't have other stuff with it. When I tell you, I'm talking about against, they would take a Ginsu knife and could go up one side and come down the other. I'm talking about band-aids and, and all, because we used to have a Christmas competition, and the winner won $5,000. You had one... You had the singles competition and the group competition. Are you sick? Yes, they gave 10 well, about thousand. 700 of y'all. Yeah, there's a lot of so, them. So, yeah. <laughs> but if you got up there, voice cracking, mouth dry, what? Literally, you was contemplating going to oh, run and try. Oh, ain't got nothing. Oh. What? Don't you ever get up here and sing again. Sound a mess. I go on. <laughs> go heat me up some leftovers and bring it back for me. <laughs> Go get me a and I give me a drink. I wish you would cry. <laughs> wow. What to my childhood. See? Did you win that five thousand? I did. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> I did. There you go. And that's why you sitting here today. Yes, sir. Appreciate it, man. You too. Great chat. You too, sir. <laughs> <laughs>